guys, today we're looking at our deck in the expanded format, which today is the Seismitoad Zoroark deck. The main attacker of this deck is Seismitoad EX, and the only attack we're going to be using is Quaking Punch, which for 2 colorless energy does 30 damage, and it item blocks your opponent for the next turn. While this may seem small and insignificant, it's just the fact that you can power up item lock on a basic with 180 HP for a single DCE is extremely strong. And there's ways to increase the damage and even heal our seismitoads, so that, that makes it really strong. One of the things, again, one of seismitoads' main weaknesses when it first came out was its lack of draw power. So we pair it with a 3 3 line of Zorak GX, which trade ability lets us discard one card and draw two cards. This provides a draw support for, um, for our deck, and also Riot is beating, does 20 damage to time the number of Pokemon to play, which also be a nice backup attacker. And can also take one shots on 180 HP Pokemon, which we'll get into later. We're also on one Pseudo Udo, which limits your opponent bench to four. This is a tech against um, other Zoroark GX decks, um, Mega Rayquaza decks. Even Tur it's even good against Turbo Dark since it limits their explosiveness. So any deck that runs Skyfield, Pseudo Udo is amazing against. Two Tapu Leles to grab supporters, and one Shaman which lets us draw until we have six cards into our hands. So that's basically the Pokemon. We run 4 DCE to power up Quaking Punch, Riot is Beating. We can Sky Return in a pinch if we need to, as well as use um, Energy Drive if, if the situation is dire enough. Now to get into um, the supporters, we run two Professor Sycamore for draw. Or three Fresher Sycamore for draw, three N for draw, two Guzma just to switch the opponent out, two Ace Arola that lets you pick, put all the Pokemon all damage cards in your hand. So let's say our opponent hits into the Seismitoad for 100 damage, they can't one shot it, we play Ace Arola, then we just play it right back down and attach to DCE, and then we can Quaking Punch again. And one Hex Maniac to show off abilities. A uh, one Karen is our Night March counter, which shuffles all the Pokemon in, from the discard into the deck. The Karen Quaking Punch combination oftentimes can just win you the Night March game, since you shuffle in all their Night Marchers, so the uh, Night March has no damage. And then Quaking Punch doesn't let them play items, so they can't get them back into the discard. So you can just Quaking Punch until you win. We also want one Team Flare Grunt, which helps discard energy. So only relocking our opponents on energy with Quaking Punch, we can also start to discard their energy too till eventually they can't attack us and they just sit there while we quaking punch until we win. Our item cards are runs 4 Ultra Ball, 4 Puzzle of Time which lets you, when you play 2, get 2 cards back. This is good synergy with Zoroark GX, it lets us get back supporters or items like Hypnotoxic Laser which is um, our main f um, source of supplementing Seismitoad's 30 damage attack which poisons um, your opponent's Pokemon automatically and then flip a coin the heads they also go to sleep if you flip the heads going to sleep and then they flip tails to stay asleep they can miss an attack allowing the damage to really stack up while 10 in between every turn isn't the gr greatest amount with Verbank City Gym it turns into 30 in between every turn and with Choice Band which is 30 more to EX from GX's you start to do a lot of damage if you have a Choice ban on your Seismitoad, and you play Hypnotoxic Laser with a Vermic City Gym in play. Does 60, 90 going into their turn. If you sleep them, they can't attack. 120 back into your turn. Another 60 for the attack. And 210 without them even being able to attack you. While you're spamming healing with Acerola or, or Disruption Supporters. Like this Enhanced Hammer, which just cards a special energy automatically. And since this is um, a he heavily special energy reliant stat expanded format. It's an extremely strong card to have. We also run 4 VS Seekers to recycle supporters, 1 Field Blower to get um, stop Garbo Toxin, and just get rid of tools and, or stadiums in general when we need to. It's always nice to have an answer to that. And 2 Floatstone just have the luxury of free retreat. Anyways, that's the deck. It's not the most complicated deck in um, the world, but it's extremely strong and let's take it to a game and see how it runs. Okay, let's see. Let's have a game against Shelly or Shelly. I'm not quite sure how that's said, but we're just waiting for them to load the game and we'll hop right into it. 
always choose Tails, and we're going first. Even though you can Quaking Punch on the first turn if you're going second, it's always good just in case you don't start the side episode, or if you wouldn't have had access to Quaking Punch on your first turn. A lot of times playing two supports to draw through more cards can give you access to it. So instead of giving your opponent an extra turn items, because they get one turn of items either way, because if you go first, they get their first turn free with items either way, it gives you two turns to find the means to attack. So we start sizing out and Zerua, good start. And obviously not gonna have to shame because we only play it for the setup ability. Looks like it's in our uh, Night March deck. So, we Ultra Ball turn one. Let's grab another Seismito just in case. He knocks this one out. And let's play Saving the sh Shame in the setup since we do have the Zorark and the VS Seeker. Already, play a Verbank since we have the. Let's grab the end just so we have the option in the bowl to decide what we want to do. I think we do just end. All right. No toxic laser, so maybe he'll get knocked out coming to our turn and just pass. Hopefully, he does not find the cards and knock out the seismitoad. Be really unfortunate if he found them all. He need quite a bit, but with Night March and all the draw they run, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility. That battle compressor is the start. Three lampants. Benches the Joltic. Second Mark Shadow. Alright. Does that looks like we're not getting knocked out going our turn because he does have the uh bloodstone. There are four in the discard right now. Finding Fury Bell is not something you usually see. Does replace it with Dimension Valley. Let's see Ultra Ball, there's five in the discard. He needs nine. You see there, retreat, and shaman set up for five most likely. Another pal compressor. Looks like we're in a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not enough for knockout. This computer search, I think, pretty much seals up the game right here. Well, I'm a little wary because this is 10 away from getting knocked out. A DCE for Sky Return does. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Ace roll of the Seismitoad. I'm just gonna Sky Return, bounce the Shaman, and let him knock out Seismitoad. I just want him to cleanly knock out one and maybe extend more resources so I can next turn uh, Karen, um, Karen um, Quaking Punch while also drawing cards from the Shaman. So, yeah, he. He, he probably thinks my hand is dead right now due to the way I played it. Just runs three Marsh out. He must really hate Zoroark. Due to the way I played it, he must think my hands are really dead. And three Fury Belt. So he was unlikely to mess with it, but really we have the perfect hand in the counter. And I'd really appreciate it if he didn't. I kind of want to get one more just to knock this out. Seems kind of counterintuitive that I'd want him to knock out my Pokemon. 
I just want to get cleanly knocked out so I can hunt with the fresh one and not have to worry about having 10 HP left and attacking with it. And now I also don't have to worry about running out of cards to draw either. Alright. So let's computer search. Maybe these are the two most useless cards in my hand right now. Let's grab the Karen, the game winning card. See, well, Karen, or one Seismitoden, put all these Pokemon back in. So not only can he not play items, he also has all these Pokemon as potential draws that aren't necessarily what he wants to see. Play this um, laser to guarantee us the knockout here. See if we can draw some enhanced hammers or more Seismitoads. Maybe even a field blower would be helpful. We do draw an enhanced hammer. And one for next turn. Actually, let's use our trade. And just quaking punch for the knockout. Now, one thing he can do is he can sky return loop. Where I have no way to one shot a Shaman EX, so he can just keep on using Sky Return to mount, keep on bouncing him back. Just ho hoping the residual 30 damage uh, stacks up. Wait, he attaches Psychic to Mars Shadow, so he won't be doing that this turn. And just passes. Hmm. Use trade away Professor Sycamore to be a VS Seekers to get them back. And do we have any support? Let's just use Quaking Punch for knockout here. He's letting us knock out his Night Marchers, try to rebuild them back up. Then with another sick, uh, with a big sycamore with a bunch in his hand, he could discard a bunch of them. If it there does happen, he'll only take another two prizes and knock out the side of the toe. We can just carry in again. He can night march for forty if he has another energy. But if it's a double colorless, we'll just knock it off. Laser attached choice band. Ninety. Fortunately for us, it's another Psychic. This is a weird Night March list. It runs four basic Psychic, and he chooses not to attack with the Joltic. Strange that he wouldn't want to do the 40 damage, but I guess he doesn't. Straight away the end. One thing we want to find is just a backup Seismitoad that we can power up in case something happens to this one. And I think that's one of the only ways we lose this game. So even though I'm not really under any pressure, let's double puzzle now to get back Ultra Ball and hit the Toxic Laser since we already used three. Get rid of these two cards. Just grab another Seismitoad and just bench it and attach the DC to it. This is really the only way we lose the game, is if he can break the Quaking Punch lock. I can, we can really just kind of sit back and Quaking Punch until we secure ourselves a victory. So we're going to retreat it to Pumpkaboo. We really like every single card in the hand. Just this quaking punch to Pumpkaboo, let him have his turn. Guess we can get rid of the floatstone. Draw just amass more cards, give us more options. This quaking punch again. 
He's up to three night marchers right now, so he can do 60. His Verbank is a good pickup. So knocking on the 150, we can actually take a knockout on this if he leaves it up with the um, Finding Fury Belt. Take a knockout on that and... Okay, so it looks like he's just going to take the knockout there. Go down to two. And let's see how many. One, two, three. Twenty. Oh, he just scoops. As you can see, Night March will be the is one of the most popular decks in the expanded format, and this deck is heavily suited uh, to beat it because you just uh, the combination of Quaking Punch and Karen, as you can see, is just uh, stifling and can just stop their stop them in their tracks. So this is a, another really solid pick for the expanded format. It's got a lot of tools to deal with different matchups and disruption cards, as well in, par in um, a strategy that found lots of success since Sizemo was first printed. Pairing Sizemo showed up with our damage cards, cards that deal more damage or cards that help it draw more cards, and it just helps create a consistent, strong deck. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching, and don't forget to subscribe.